tell yourself, that's it, I'm done, this is the last time, and you actually mean it in the moment. But the next day, you catch yourself doing the exact same thing all over again. Whether it's staying up way too late, scrolling through your phone, grabbing a bag of potato chips and swearing you'll only eat a handful, or checking your phone every five minutes like something life-changing will pop up, somehow the habit pulls you back in. It feels almost unfair, like your brain is working against you. So why is it so hard to break a bad habit even when you know better? Hello my beautiful superheroes, welcome to my channel. I'm Scarlett Grace and I help people bring their dreams to life by combining timeless mind techniques with psychology and the latest discoveries in neuroscience. This channel is all about becoming the version of you who has it all. If you're new here, make sure you hit subscribe and click the bell icon so that you don't miss any future videos that can change your life. And if you want to work with me more closely or check out my courses, all the links are in the description below. Let's talk about habits. Here's the truth. Breaking a habit isn't just about willpower. If it were, you would have quit the first time you said, this is the last time. Habits are wired into your brain at such a deep level that by the time you even realize you're doing the thing, your brain has already run the program. So let's start with how habits actually form so that we can understand how to break them. Your brain loves efficiency. Every time you repeat a behavior that feels rewarding, even in a small way, your brain takes note. For example, maybe you're stressed at work and without even thinking, you start twirling your hair or chewing on the end of a pen. It distracts you just enough to lower the stress in the moment. That little bit of relief triggers dopamine, the neurotransmitter linked to pleasure and learning. Dopamine is basically your brain's way of saying, hey, that worked, do it again next time. Over time, your brain connects the dots. Stressful email? Hair probe. Sitting on the couch with the TV on? Crab potato chips. Lying in bed at night? Reach for the phone and start scrolling. These key behavior reward loops get wired into a part of your brain called the basal ganglia. Think of it as your autopilot system. Now, here's why that matters. The basal ganglia runs faster and stronger than your conscious decision-making brain. So when you're stressed or tired or distracted, autopilot system wins. That is why you can find yourself halfway through a bag of chips before you've even made the decision to have chips. Now, here's where it gets frustrating. You do have a conscious brain, the prefrontal cortex, that's responsible for things like planning, decision-making, and impulse control. This is the part of your brain you're trying to use when you say, I will stop tomorrow. But the autopilot system doesn't negotiate. It doesn't care about your plans, only about what has worked before. And when those two systems clash, autopilot usually wins. So it's not that you're weak. It's not that you lack self-control. It's not that you don't have willpower. It's that your brain is literally designed to favor automatic behaviors that brought relief or reward in the past. And once those pathways are wired in, they are very efficient. They fire faster than your conscious brain can stop them. Let me give you another reason why habits are so sticky. Your brain is biased towards immediate rewards. Imagine this. You tell yourself you won't scroll on your phone tonight because you want to get better sleep. The problem? Better sleep is a delayed reward. But the quick dopamine hit from checking TikTok or Instagram is instant. The brain loves instant. And 9 times out of 10, instant gratification beats delayed benefits, even when you know the delayed benefit is better for you long term. This explains why breaking habits feels like a tag of war. Logically, you know what you should do. But biologically, your brain is prioritizing the short-term win. And it doesn't stop there. Your thoughts also trick you into keeping a habit alive. Let's talk about a few of the sneaky patterns your brain uses. 
The first of those is just this once. You tell yourself it's not a big deal. It is just one exception. But each one time reinforces the habit loop. You're teaching your brain that the rule isn't really a rule. The second common pattern is, I'll start fresh tomorrow. Sounds reasonable, right? Except tomorrow never comes. What actually happens is you repeat the loop again and again while convincing yourself that change is always just around the corner. The third one is, I deserve this. Rough day, stressful meeting, that little reward becomes a way of coping. Except instead of solving the stress, it just locks the habit in deeper. These thoughts feel harmless in the moment, but they're powerful because they give your autopilot permission to keep running the same old program. So what do you do about it? How do you actually stand a chance against a brain that seems wired to keep you stuck? The first thing is to realize you can't fight habits head-on with willpower alone. That is like bringing a knife to a gunfight. Willpower is limited. It drains as the day goes on, especially when you're stressed or tired. But you can outsmart your habits by designing your environment and routines differently. For example, if you tend to stay up scrolling at night, plug your phone in across the room before going to bed. That way, when the cue hits, lying in bed, you've created friction. You'd have to physically get up to reach your phone, which makes the autopilot loop harder to run. If potato chips are your weakness, don't keep them sitting on the counter where they're easy to grab. Out of sight, out of reach, means your brain doesn't get cued as easily. If you have the habit of chewing your pen when you're stressed, keep something else nearby that can replace that behavior, maybe a stress ball or a fidget toy. That way, when the stress cue arrives, you're ready with a different automatic action. Another strategy is to write out the craving instead of giving into it immediately. Don't try to push it away. Don't try to use your willpower to fight it. Tell yourself, that's okay that I have it. I'll wait 10 minutes first. Most urges fade in intensity after a few minutes. By waiting, you give your conscious brain time to catch up and make a different decision instead of letting autopilot take over. And here is a big one. Change the cue whenever possible. Many habits are tied to specific environments or times of day. For example, if lying in bed always leads to scrolling, Try using your phone on the couch only and read a book when you're in your bed instead or watch a TV. That way, you're training your brain to associate the same cue with a completely different routine. Now, let's be real. Even with these strategies, you're going to slip up sometimes. And that's okay. A slip up doesn't erase progress. What matters is what happens after the slip. Every time you return to your new behavior, even after messing up, you're strengthening that new pathway in your brain. Think of it like carving a trail in the woods. Each time you walk the new path, it gets clearer and easier to follow, even if sometimes you wander back to the old one. So the next time you catch yourself breaking a promise you made to yourself, remember this. It is not proof that you're weak. It's just proof that your brain is running an old program that was hardwired in. And the good news is, with consistency and a little strategy, you can teach your brain a new program. One that works for you, not against you. So, what's one habit you want to break? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.